Hello and welcome to another podcast from School of Surgery. Today we're going to be talking about describing a fracture on x-ray. We'll briefly define a fracture, we'll describe some basic fractures on x-ray, finally looking at some examples. So to start with, just to clarify, a fracture is a disruption of all or part of the cortex of a bone. This is important and we'll refer back to it later. So a basic format for describing a fracture on x-ray is to start with the patient demographics and that you're looking at the correct film at the right time. Then we'll talk about the location of the fracture, including the bone and site and side. Then we'll talk about the type of fracture before finally describing any displacement which may have occurred. So starting with checking demographics. The important things to check are that you've got the right patient looking at their name, date of birth and hospital number, and that you're looking at the x-ray you want to be looking at, i.e. on the right day and time, finally checking which side of the patient you're looking at. Next we'll talk about the location of the fracture. This is important for describing especially over the phone, so not only do you want the right side, but also in terms of fractures, the right bone. Next, looking at the location of the fracture, it's important to mention whether it's affecting the proximal, middle or distal third of the bone. This is helpful in your description of the fracture, especially if you're describing it over the phone to one of your colleagues who can then visualise where this fracture is affecting the bone. Then, another important thing to mention is whether or not the, the fracture is affecting the shaft of the bone or if it involves the articular surface. This is particularly important for some fractures and their subsequent management. So an example here would be a fracture affecting someone, a patient's right fibula. It's on the shaft of the bone and it's in the distal third. Now we'll talk about types of fracture. So this is a, a simple, common type of fracture which is transverse. You then have oblique where the fracture line is simply in an oblique fashion. Spiral which can be more difficult to detect and often requires more than one view so maybe an AP and then a lateral view. And an avulsion fracture, which commonly occurs where forces have occurred forcing a tendon attached to the bone to pull off a fragment or segment of bone. Green stick. Now if you remember the definition of a fracture, it could be loss of cortex of part of a bone. So in this case, we've lost the cortex on one side of the bone, but not on the other. This commonly occurs in children, where the bones are much more flexible, and so you can get a crack on one side, or a disruption of the cortex, but not on the other, and these can be difficult to spot. Next important thing to mention is whether or not the fracture is simple, i.e. one fracture line, or comminuted, so more than one, seg more than one fragment. Now finally we'll talk about displacement. So there are various forms of displacement which can occur in any fracture. They can be translated, it can be impacted, rotated or angulated. And when describing displacement, the important thing to remember is to talk about the proximal fragment and the distal fragment. And when you're talking about these forms of displacement, you're referring to the position of the distal fragment in relation to the proximal fragment. So an example here would be that the distal fragment has translated 50%. You don't have to use percentages, you could use other terms such as significantly, or moderately, but the important thing is to get across the fact that the distal fragment is being displaced compared with the proximal fragment. In this case it would be completely translated, so 100% or more. Next is angulation, so the distal fragment having become angulated in comparison with the proximal fragment. Now you can describe this as anterior angulation or lateral angulation, but just remember in orthopaedics there are more specific terms which may refer to specific joints in the body, for example in the wrist, dorsal or volar angulation. So here we can see that the distal fragment has been angulated towards the medial aspect by approximately 45 degrees. Next is rotation. If you imagine you've got a complete fracture in the middle of a bone, as you can see here, there's the opportunity for the distal fragment not only to displace by angulating or becoming impacted, but it can also rotate. An example would be if you have a complete femoral shaft fracture. If you imagine your foot is then pointing medially or laterally, it's likely that the distal fragment, i.e. the rest of your leg, has become rotated. 
Finally is impaction. So if you imagine you've got a complete fracture, but then, for example, due to weight bearing or other reasons, the two ends of bone come together and then impact into each other, which can lead to a degree of shortening. The way you would detect this on x-ray is by seeing increased opacification over that area where the two pieces of bone might be overlying each other. Now we'll try and put this all together with some common examples. So here we'll check the demographics of this film we've been presented. It's a wrist x-ray of Joe Bloggs, and we can check the right details there, and it was taken on the 23rd of June 2012 in the morning. Then we'll talk about the location of the fracture. So in this case, it's a patient's left wrist, and it's in the distal third of the radius. Then talking about the type of fracture. So in this case, it's a transverse fracture. And then in terms of displacement, now, this is where you can easily be caught out, because to accurately describe any displacement, ideally you should have a second view, as in this case. So as you can see on the film on the left hand side, which is the one we saw before, it's very difficult to describe if there is any displacement. However, once you've got the second angle, which is the lateral view, you can see that there's possibly some anterior angulation of the distal fragment. Here's another fracture. So after describing the things we've already talked about, such as the demographics, this is an example of a femoral shaft fracture, which is affecting the proximal third of the femur and it looks like it's spiral in nature, but it's simple, not comminuted. To further comment on any displacement, we'd need to see a lateral view. Here, we can see a radiograph of a patient's left fibula, or ankle joint. We'd obviously want to comment on the demographics. It's in the distal third of the fibula, probably oblique in nature. However, we can't comment on the displacement because we haven't got a lateral view. So just to clarify, we've talked about the definition of a fracture, we've looked at the features you may identify on x-ray using some diagrams, and finally we've looked through some common examples on x-ray. Thank you for listening to another podcast by School of Surgery. Remember, you can find us by searching School of Surgery on Facebook, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, or you can go straight to the website schoolofsurgery.podomatic.com. Thank you very much.